Today, we're talking leather. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Hi everybody. So as you might know, I already posted a part one of this Let's Talk Leather Q&A. I just had to divide it into two different videos because it was getting really, really long during editing and I didn't want you to have to sit through like an hour and a half long video. So this is just part two of that Q&A. I hope that I answer some of your questions to your satisfaction and I hope that you enjoy. I would love a video about croc emboss leather. I tend to go for that because it's very durable. Yes. So any bag that has a imprint on it, a heat applied pattern pressed on top of it, is going to be more durable than a smooth leather. So caviar leather or pebble leather is going to be more durable than a grain leather. Croc emboss leather is also generally going to be more durable than a smooth leather or a grain leather. And that is just because of the embossing process. So embossing leather is just the process of heat stamping a, a pattern or a grain onto a leather hide. And it doesn't necessarily change the quality of the leather. Sometimes embossing can mask issues with the leather and that's a quality issue, but you can have a full grain hide or a top grain hide and emboss that and it's very good quality leather. It's just got an embossing laid on top. Hermes Epsom leather, for instance, is a top quality full grain leather that has been embossed with a heat imprint to have those cap like granules the pebble leather it's embossed it's still full grain leather it's still great quality but it is an embossed leather in terms of embossing and durability there are several different factors that affect the the quality and durability of embossed leather and that is how hot the embossing is like how the, the type of heat that's used to emboss the pattern the strength of the press like how much pressure is exerted onto the leather to emboss the pattern onto it the amount of time required for stamping so how much time the stamp has been pushed onto the leather all those factors affect the type of embossing how deep the embossing goes and how durable the leather will be afterwards so you're basically you're taking a hide, a leather hide, and it could be either full grain, top grain, corrected grain, or a split, and you're taking a, a stamp basically, and you're heating the stamp, and taking the stamp, and pressing it really hard onto leather, hopefully on very high heat, hopefully very, very high pressure, and hopefully for a very good amount of time. And then you remove it, and that's the embossed leather is the result. So for croc embossed leather, and one of the reasons why it might be durable, especially you know for a luxury leather, it's because you have a good quality leather hide already, and they're using a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and a long stamp process to put the pattern onto the leather to make it croc embossed. Obviously not all embossed leather is the same. You can have a very thin piece of leather that's been embossed and that will be poor quality in the same way that you can have a full grain leather piece that's embossed and have it be good quality. It, it obviously depends on the leather hide that you have to start with on top of the, the factors that are involved in the embossing process. But yes, yeah, so the different types of embossing processes and the type of leather that you start with is going to, if you start with a good quality leather and then you use the proper factors of the embossing process and combine those two, you are going to have a very durable leather because you essentially have put a hardened coating on top of a good quality leather already, which will make it very hardy. That's not going to say that an embossed piece isn't going to suffer from like corner wear or anything, but you usually can scratch an embossed piece and have absolutely nothing happen to it. Kind of in the same way that you can scratch a caviar or a pebble leather and not have a problem with it. But the difference between pebbled leather and embossed croc type leather, because they're both embossed, it's just one's pebbled, one's croc, is that you remove a texture or you add a texture onto it. So if you have pebbled leather and you scrape a pebble off, that's obvious damage to the to the bag. If you have a croc embossed leather, you don't have any pebbles to scrape away. So unless you like gouge it, it it's not really gonna show damage in the same way that a smooth leather or even a, a caviar might. Could you do a comparison between vintage coach and modern coach leather? Yes, I do plan on doing that. I have an entire video planned where I compare vintage coach to modern coach and in terms of modern coach i talk about outlet leather versus coach new york leather versus the 1941 leather that was going on for a while like i have a whole video planned about all that stuff it's just it's going to be an involved video just like the previous let's talk leather videos were so i have to find the time and the strength to to do it but it is coming i i promise it's just 
it's got to happen first. But yes, it, that is something that I definitely want to do. A couple of questions were about specific brands again. So Lady Dior Leather and Craftsmanship, Fendi Leathers and Craftsmanship, Hermes Leathers and Craftsmanship. So again, the specific brand leathers and going into detail about those bags and brands, those are videos in themselves. Like Hermes has 50 bajillion different kinds of leathers and, and treatments. And so that, that would be a really long video uh, just by itself. Same thing with Fendi, same with Dior. Dior has a bunch of different types of leathers, a bunch of different types of treatments. And, and I don't have a lot of experience personally with Dior. That would just be research-based, so that would be kind of separate. So those are those are all videos in themselves. So I apologize that I'm not specifically talking about those in, in this video. So this is another question about the Chanel 22 controversy. Uh, I wonder from a business standpoint, would it make sense to use full grain leather for the construction of the 22 because it would not want to spend on the dying higher quality leather for a bag that may not reach commercial success. So until the sales figures support keeping the bag, they would use uh, inferior leather. What do you think? I I'm pretty sure the question is asking basically, do you think that it's possible Chanel used an inferior leather for the Chanel 22 because it was a brand new and sort of experimental bag and until they knew that it was going to be successful, it wasn't like worth using higher quality leathers and a better treatment processes for it. I do not know about that. It, it's been known before that a company will use less quality pieces for like the first run or, you know, strange makes like they're experimental for the first run because they don't know what they're doing yet. But I don't necessarily know for certain if that was what Chanel's choice was. And also sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes a company will use the best quality of something for the first one because they want people to think that it's really, really good. And then over time, the quality starts to decline in, in some way or another. So it's, it's, there are two different ways that that could be approached. I know, for instance, that there are some people who kind of refuse to buy the first run or first release of a bag because they want to see how it wears. And I've, I've done the same. I haven't bought like the first one of something because I want to see what it looks like in two years from now. And that is a method that you can sometimes use, but sometimes you can if it's like a limited run of something. So it, it's sort of a, a give and a take there. I will say that from pictures of the 22, again, I have not touched one. I haven't dissected one. I don't know. It does look like a painted bag to me. From damage I've seen, a lot of people have been sharing their damage on social media. It looks like a painted bag where the paint, uh, the coat of paint is peeling off. And I discussed this more in depth in my previous video. In terms of the leather underneath it, I don't know. It doesn't look great. And it is possible that they are using inferior quality leathers because it is so new and they don't know how it's gonna do yet, but I, I don't know for certain. It's an interesting theory though, and I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if that was the case, I just have no confirmation. I really hope, by the way, that I'm answering these questions in a satisfactory manner. I, I'm doing my best, there's a lot of information that I'm trying to share, so I, I, I just hope I'm doing okay here. I'm interested to know more about goatskin leather. What's the difference between goatskin and lambskin? And what do you think about the black color Chanel 19 that have been made with these two different types of leathers? All right, so goatskin and lambskin first are different animals and they're different ages of animals. So lambskin is a lamb, which is a young sheep. Goatskin is usually an older animal because it's not kid skin, which is, which is different. Kid is young goat, goat is older goat. Whereas lambskin is young lamb and sheepskin is older sheep. So their durabilities are different from the get-go. Lambskin is generally a more delicate leather. Goatskin is more robust. Goatskin tends to also appear tighter than lambskin leather. Like if you see pictures of goat versus lamb in the same bag, the lambskin will generally look more like pillowy and plush and supple, where the goatskin will have a sometimes more reflective, like tighter sheen to it. I can generally tell the difference between goat skin and lamb skin just from pictures because they look very different. Goat skin also tends to scratch differently than lamb skin does. One of the things that lamb skin is most known for is that if you scratch it, especially if it's like a surface scratch, you can buff out the scratches. Now, usually this requires several minutes of buffing. It's not just like a 30 second process. It's several minutes of buffing the scratch out, which will help remove scratches. And obviously it doesn't work for deeper gouges, but goat skin, because of its tighter nature, like it's got like more elasticity in it, it also tends to not buff out as well. However, it is also true that goat skin doesn't scratch as easily to start with as lamb skin does. So it's sort of like one or the other, like lamb skin will scratch more easily than goat skin, 
but lambskin will also buff the scratches out a little bit better than goatskin. Goatskin also tends to be a little bit more water repellent than lambskin is. Goatskin is more likely to have water bead versus lambskin, which will have water sink in. Now, obviously, if your bag gets wet, you wanna wipe it off immediately, but goatskin, it's a little bit less uh, in, in peril, if that makes sense. Is bonded leather similar to split leather? So no, bonded leather and split leather are, are different. Split leather is still leather. It is still an, a fully animal hide. It's just not very good quality. It's thinner. It doesn't last as long. It's not as durable. Bonded leather or, or PU leather is leather that has been bonded with plastic. So while split leather is still one full sheet of, of leather hide that's just been cut into slices. Bonded leather is like leather scraps that are like ground up in a little mush. And then using plastic elements that are also melted down and mixed into this leather mush, it is then made into a, a leather type material that does contain traces of leather, but is primarily plasticized. So the big difference between bonded and split is that split leather is genuine leather. Essentially, it's the lowest quality leather possible, but it's still actual leather. Bonded leather is plastic with like leather kind of mixed in. If I had to choose between the two, I would choose split leather every time for two different reasons. One, split leather doesn't have plastic in it. I don't want more plastic. I don't need more plastic in my life. I don't need more plastic in the world. Split leather is at least just leather. It doesn't have plastic elements. That also means that split leather will break down in a different way. It will decompose in a different way. It can be recycled in a different way. Whereas bonded leather is gonna just kind of be garbage. It, 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 it can't be reused in, in any way, where at least you have damaged split leather, it can decompose, you know, it can go into a compost pile, it can be recycled in, in, a, in a way that is not detrimental to the environment. Split leather also will wear better than bonded leather. Bonded leather is much more prone to cracking, to, to tearing, to peeling, whereas split leather, it's still leather, so it can't like peel, really. I mean, it could crack if it gets too dry, like any leather can crack if it gets too dry, but it's not going to distress in the same way that bonded leather does. So you have like a, a, a couch or a shoe and you have the difference between genuine leather, which is usually what split leather is, and bonded leather, I would say split leather every time. You're gonna have a couch that lasts for many, many more years and also will probably retain color better. Does natural grain calfskin mean the same as top grain leather? I noticed the handbag was described as having natural grain leather on Ferragamo's website. So it normally does. Natural grain leather, like it sounds, is leather that hasn't been altered or given a faux grain. So if you have have a leather piece that has a natural grain on it, that means that it hasn't been adulterated in any way. So it is not split or genuine leather that's been embossed. It's not top grain leather that's been embossed. It's just full grain leather that has a grain to it. Normally natural grain leather is leather that's been tumbled in such a way that it pulls out the natural pebbling in the leather so you can see the texture that belonged to the leather itself. But that's not necessarily what it always means. You can have natural grain smooth leather that's smooth, but if you have textured natural grain leather, it's been tumbled but not embossed. I've had several different people ask me about coach, so again, I'm going to be doing a, a full video, dedicated video about coach leathers. I have a question about lambskin leather. Is there a way to recognize a more durable one between different lambskin leathers? I'm thinking about new Chanel minis to be precise. So texture, size of the pores, wrinkles, puffiness of the quilts, etc. So this is probably not the answer that you're hoping for, but the answer is kind of yes and no. A lot of my ability in, in terms of telling leather quality, especially from just looking at it or just touching it, comes from experience and, and many years from of doing this and learning and kind of training my fingers and training my eyes to learn about what leather feels like when it's of different qualities and of different durabilities. However, if you don't have these years, it, it can be a little bit trickier to kind of tell quality and construction just from looking at it, especially if you don't like have, you know, a microscope or something to really observe the different like layers of the texture. However, and I don't know how helpful this will be, but in terms of Chanel lambskin leather, there is usually this slipperiness versus a roughness that you can feel that will sometimes help you determine whether or not a piece is more or less durable than another. So if you take, you know, a lambskin bag or, or SLG or something and you rub your thumb or even like a knuckle over it, you'll feel kind of how your finger like slides across the, the lambskin. And if the lambskin is very, very smooth as opposed to slightly rough to the touch, that can help you determine its durability. A lot of very delicate lambskins are incredibly, incredibly slippery. And I don't just mean soft, I mean there's a lack of 
texture. And that is often why they scratch so easily. It's because the lack of texture kind of lends it to being able to be scratched like with just like a nick of a nail or something versus a slightly rougher textured lambskin. Still soft, but the texture itself is, is slightly rougher. That is less likely to catch on things that can scratch it, which might lend to it being more durable. Now of note, even in my vintage lambskin bags, which are beautifully soft and smooth and supple, they do still have a little bit of a roughness of texture to them, as opposed to some of my other lambskin pieces, which have a very slippery feel to them. And I don't know if that's getting my point across very well. Maybe I'll try to dedicate a full video to like just how different things should feel and look. Let me know if you'd be interested in that because I, I think I could do it. I just, I don't think I can do it like on the spot right now, not completely prepared. In a previous video comparing caviar and lambskin Chanel, you mentioned that Rev pieces are the highest quality full grain vegetable tan hide. Is Chanel still using this? All right, so Rev, for those of you who don't know, REV Chanel pieces are the pieces that come out every season. So it's like the classic flaps in the, the classic black in the classic beige clear. It is the card holders in the classic colors. Those are Rev pieces. They come out every single season. The pieces that are seasonal pieces or colors are going to be like 22P or 19S or 23B. Those are the pieces that aren't Rev. They aren't colors that come out every single season or they're not bag styles that come out every single season. So uh, yes, as I mentioned in a previous video where I discussed Chanel caviar versus lambskin leather, the differences between the two, similarities between them both, different qualities of them. I'll link that video for you. I discussed that Rev pieces are made of full grain, top quality, vegetable tanned hide. Is that still the case? Well, so there are three different layers to this question. Is Chanel still using hot, top quality leather? Are they still using full grain leather? And are they still using vegetable tanned leather? And I don't know. I haven't been told any different, but I haven't also been told that they still are doing those things. I would be very surprised if Chanel moved their Rev pieces from vegetable tanning to chrome tanning because that would first of all upset their entire system and their whole reputation truly and I, I don't think that they would do that because that would mean also it would mean just getting different tanneries and different sources and different like people that they were working with for a period of many years so I don't know if they would just like completely switch operations from like these factories to these factories. They could. I don't see why they would all of a sudden, but they could, but I, I hope they don't. In terms of top quality leather, full grain leather, I only have a couple of Rev pieces from the current season. I have a flat card holder and I have a flat card holder. My flat card holder is in lambskin. My flat card holder is in caviar. And those are the two pieces I have from 2022. Now those two pieces both seem fine to me. They do seem to be in good quality. They seem to be well made. They seem to be in good shape. The lambskin on the flat card holder is a rougher texture which does, as I mentioned in a previous question, which does lend me to believe that it's going to be a more durable lambskin leather, but I do feel that it is going to supple over time, not become more delicate over time, but I do think that with time, as I age it, as I patina it with my fingers, because that's what I bought it for, I do think that it is going to supple over time. And in regards to both of those pieces, they both are full grain leather. You can see the pores on them. They they look like full grain leather, they feel like full grain leather to me, so I don't have a reason to believe that they aren't. Now, I, I do believe I already said this, but it is very difficult to make lambskin pieces, smooth lambskin pieces from lesser quality hides, because if you do so, you sacrifice the integrity of the leather itself in the piece. So if you have a lesser quality hide that has like marks in it and you use it for a bag, the bag is going to have like a mark in it. That being said, a lambskin card holder is a very small item, so you don't have to use a lot of animal hide to, to make it. Whereas the Jumbo Classic Flap is a lot of animal hide and it's a lot of big pieces of, of animal hide. So you have the flap, which is, which is one piece of leather that is caviar embossed. Is that caviar embossment possibly to hide the fact that the leather itself is a lower quality? Still full grain possibly, but like a lower quality full grain? Yes. I haven't looked at one, but it is entirely possible that it is true. I think that there's generally a lot of speculation about Chanel leathers right now because a lot of people just don't know because Chanel isn't 
telling anybody and they don't have to. They're a privately owned company. They don't answer to stockholders or shareholders in any way. So they don't have to tell anybody anything, which is frustrating if you want to know more, but it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. Now, obviously I'm not saying like all Chanel leathers are bad. All current Chanel pieces are bad quality because that's just, I, I can't say that. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't say that, but I will say that I am noticing more and more, not flaws in construction, but changes in leather feel and leather quality that shouldn't be happening if they're using the same processes and the same level of quality that they've previously adhered to, if that makes sense. Like for instance, they're not rev pieces, so this is a little bit of a deviation from your question, but Chanel 19 bags currently are made in only lambskin leather. They used to be in goat, now they're in lamb. And they're in lambskin leather, but the lambskin leather itself feels different than other lambskin leathers that Chanel has produced. Or for instance, last year I was in the boutique and I tried on two different mini squares. One was from 21P and one was from, I believe, 21S. They were two different seasons, two different lambskins and uh, yellow and blue, basically. And the yellow one felt much more like lambskin than the blue one did. It also felt a little bit more delicate than the blue one did, but it felt more like lambskin to me. So I do think that even if Chanel is using the same types of leathers, I think that they're treating it differently. They might be changing their tanning process up. They might be changing their dyeing or treatment process up. It, there's a lot of different factors that go into creating these pieces. I do know that older bags definitely were, like 2018, 2019, they might have been not well made for some people, but in terms of the, the leather itself, I, I've found no problems with the leather itself. Now, people have been talking about construction issues and, and that's a different thing as I, I have already talked about. Construction and quality of materials are two different things. So you can have a very well-constructed bag from poor quality materials, or you can have excellent quality materials and not a well-constructed bag, or you can have great both, or you can have poor both. It, it, it depends on a lot of different things. I do know that previously, just in the last few years, like 2018, 2019, I have pieces from those years and they're fine, they're good, they're, I, no complaints. 2020 even, I have two uh, walks from 2020. One walk is Rev, it's the Black Caviar, and one is a 20A Métier Da uh, walk. And again, I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with them in terms of the quality of materials. Current Chanel might be changing, and I don't necessarily think it's for the better or the worse necessarily, but I do think it's for different. I do think it's for the different, and I would love to be able to learn more. I'd love to be given the opportunity to learn more. I don't really know how to right now, but I would love to do so. If you have any suggestions, uh, please feel free to let me know. I think that's all the questions I have in me today. I've been filming for about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna have to cut this down. I hope that this is fine. I know that I went off on a couple of different tangents, so I hope that I answered your questions as best as I could. And again, some of these questions are going to be separate videos, so I hope that is also okay. If you have any other questions or want me to clarify anything or want me to do a second Q&A leather-based video, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to. This is just, I think, all I've got in me for right now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was interesting or helpful in some way. I hope that it was understandable, if not completely comprehensive. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.